The color yellow and its friend orange have a bit of a reputation for being hard to paint. Well, I'm going to show you a fun recipe for yellow that looks awesome. Yellow paints and pigments tend to give poor coverage, and that can be frustrating. This translucency can be used to our advantage, though. Instead of working against us, the undercoat can help us achieve a yellow that's warm and bright and vibrant. The trick for this recipe is to start with pink. Seriously. I primed up these models with pink. I know, I know, this sounds crazy, but just wait, it's gonna be super cool. This technique makes good use of my handy airbrush. A similar effect can be achieved by hand, but the airbrush gives really smooth layers and saves a whole lot of time. If you're on the fence about picking up an airbrush, bookmark videos like this one until the day comes that you have room for an airbrush in your life. The pink primer was Dull Pink from Badger's Steinel Res line. Next up, we're using a white ink to do a zenithal highlight. This is Liquitex Acrylic Ink, Titanium White. All of this is to get our undercoat looking nice for when we're ready to bring in the yellow. The goal here is to make smooth color transitions from white to pink. In general, I'm putting white on the high parts of the model where the sun is shining brightest. The reason I'm using these inks instead of standard acrylic paints is that they play nicely with the airbrush. Nice thin coats, limited splatter, and no jams. They work well right out of the bottle with no thinner or flow improver needed. To really emphasize these color transitions, I load up with muted pink Liquitex ink. I'm using this color to deepen the pink on the underside of the model. Anywhere that I think should be a bit shadowed gets an extra squirt of muted pink. I'm not being squeamish about going from very bright white to very deep pink. These dramatic transitions are going to really pay off in just a second. This undercoat is about to make sense. It's time for the yellow. I'm loading up this Indian yellow from the Dollar Rowney FW ink line. I chose this particular yellow because I like the way that it flirts with orange, but any hue of yellow should work with this technique. Here we go, laying down some smooth, translucent yellow. Over the white areas of the undercoat, it presents as a striking bright yellow. Over the pink areas of the undercoat, we get a warm, orangey-brown color. As we lay on thin layers of yellow ink, our transitions from pink to white become transitions from orange-brown to bright yellow. I don't know about you, but I think this looks incredible. This moment right here is what it's all about. Now as fun as this is, I'm being patient and I'm staying calm. I'm making sure that droplets of yellow ink aren't forming on the model and streaking around. One thin layer after another, with enough drying time in between. As we've said, yellow is highly translucent, so this will take a few coats. Kenny at Next Level Painting talks about nurturing colors when you're airbrushing. Be patient and gentle. Give them what they need and let them grow. We're going to nurture up those layers of yellow ink until we get the effect that we want. I'm going to seal this real quick with a clear coat of satin varnish. These super thin layers of ink can be delicate, so it's prudent to protect the work that we've done with a bit of varnish. Next, we can get to work on the rest of the paint job. Of course, there are lots of other colors and bits on these models, but it's the yellow that's going to dominate and get people to love them. Brush painting always takes me longer than airbrushing, and there are a bunch of cool details on these figures. But let's hurry up and get back to painting that sweet yellow. Okay, now it's time to give the yellow a bit of a wash. I'm using Strong Tone from Army Painter. This is a dark brown wash. The satin varnish that we laid down is going to help the wash flow over the raised areas and settle into the recesses. This will give some depth while also outlining and emphasizing all of the shapes in these yellow segments. Now, washes over yellow can be a bit risky since they can dirty things up more than you might want. In this case, I like the effect, but make sure that you do a bit of testing before you really commit to a wash over clean, bright yellow. If you want to draw extra attention to some recesses, you can pin wash with dark colors exactly where you want them. This is Games Workshop Nuln Oil that I'm using for the gouges in the armor. Finally, it's time for a little edge highlighting. I'm taking yellow paint and highlighting the sharp edges of the armor. All the places where the armor plates start, end, and join. I'm also highlighting one edge of each of the gouges in the armor. 
I like to highlight the bottom of the gouge where light might be catching that ragged edge. Once I'm done highlighting, well that about does it for the paint recipe for this yellow armor. I gave the models a final clear coat with 50-50 satin and matte varnish. And here's the finished result. Yellow can be tricky, but it can also be super rewarding when you get it right. I know that not everyone has an airbrush, but if you're ever looking for an excuse to take the plunge, this is a pretty good one right here. So this armor is bordering on orange. Modifications can easily be made to end up with a much brighter yellow if that's what we're after. Using more white than pink in the undercoat, using a different hue of yellow ink, or going lighter on that brown wash would all result in a truer, brighter yellow. For me though, I'm loving the look of this dirty yellow orange on these Warriors of Chaos. My name is Brent, and you've been watching Goobertown Hobbies. I love working with fun, vibrant colors. This strategy for painting yellow gets used occasionally in my project videos. Enough people have asked about it that I decided to publish this quick tip to make it easier to find. I first heard about this paint recipe in a comment on this channel. Using pink to paint yellow, what a delightful concept. Absolutely exquisite. I wish that I had tricks this good for the rest of the rainbow. I'm always ready to learn crazy new color recipes, so let me know what you've got. And as always, thank you so much for watching.